It is a good life we lead, brother. <sighs> At best, may it never change. And may it never change us. Gentlemen, I'll protect this artifact with my very life. Arno? Where have you gone? You! You're the traitor! I'm just finishing old business. Connor and his assassins. The American Revolution undid your Templar business. And perhaps we shall start a revolution of our own. <laughs> Uphold the principles of our order and all that for which we stand. Never share our secrets, nor divulge the true nature of our work. Do so until death, whatever the cost. This is my new creed. I am Shea Patrick Cormac, Templar of the Colonial, of the American Right. I am an older man now, and perhaps wiser. A war and a revolution have ended. And another is about to begin. May the Father of Understanding guide us all. Where are you, Charles? Gone. Give me Lee! You fare no better. Even when your kind appears to triumph. Still we rise again, and do you know why? It's because the Order is born of a realization. We require no creed, no indoctrination by desperate old men. All we need is that the world be as it is. And this is why the Templars will never be destroyed. saying I was wrong. I will not weep and wonder what might have been. I'm sure you understand. Still, I'm proud of you in a way. You have shown great conviction, strength, courage, all noble qualities. I should have killed you long ago. Ahoy! Any luck? I found one crate hidden beneath a school of sharks. Sadly, the elixir inside is quite spoiled. Plague and oh, perish. Will we steal medicines now? Remember the pardon, Thatch. We're to be subtle. Says Ornegold, a pirate, now too proud to call himself one. Now he prefers caution to cannons. Caution's nothing without charisma. Or if a man plays the fool, then it's only fools he'll persuade, but appear to be the devil. And all men will submit. And would you be the devil? Before all 
what else? <sighs> oh, God. Looks fine. Of course it does. You can find a quiet way to acquire medicines. Tell me soon. Otherwise, I'll handle it myself. Up! Up! Walk! Hello, Connor. Didn't think I'd miss your going away party, did ya? <laughs> I hear Washington himself is gonna be in attendance. Hope nothing bad happens to him. You said there'd be a trial. Oh, no trial for traitors, I'm afraid. Lee and Haytham sort of that. It's straight to the gallows for you. <laughs> I will not die today. The same cannot be said for you. That's enough! Keep moving! Stop Hickey. He's... Uh, up you go. Don't want to be late now, do we? You just had to be an hero, didn't you? You and Georgie both. Now you see what it gets you. A pine box and little else. Brothers. Sisters. Fellow patriots. Several days ago, we learned of a scheme so vile, so dastardly. That even repeating it now disturbs my being. The man before you plotted to murder our much beloved general. Indeed, what darkness or madness moved him, none can say. And he himself offers no defense, shows no remorse. And though we have begged and pleaded with him to share what he knows, he maintains a deadly silence. If the man will not explain himself, if he will not confess and atone, what other option do we have but this? He sought to send us into the arms of the enemy, and thus we are compelled by justice to send him from this world. May God have mercy on yourself. <laughs> Need to stop, Hickey. Go.
Another artifact? No. You will stay here. I have seen enough for one life. Desmond? He's talking to me? I heard your name once before, Desmond. A long time ago. And now it lingers in my mind. An image from an old dream. I have lived my life as best I could, not knowing its purpose, but drawn forward like a moth to a distant moon. Maybe you will answer all the questions I have asked. Maybe you will be the one to make all this suffering worth something in the end. Now, listen. Do you hear me, Cypher? Can you see me? Ah, there you are. Good. A strange place, this nexus of time. I am not used to the calculations. That has always been Minerva's domain. You will have your answers. Only listen, and I will tell you how. The end and after we sought to save the world. We built vaults within which to work, each dedicated to a different method of salvation. They were placed underground to avoid the war which raged above, and also as a precaution should we fail in our efforts.
The earth shook for days, the fires burned for weeks, and when the ash had settled, less than 10,000 of your kind still lived, and far fewer of ours. But we carried on, together, to rebuild, to renew. Listen, you must go there, to the place where we labored, labored and lost. Take my words, pass them from your head into your hands. That is how you will open the way. But be warned, much still remains in flux, and I do not know how things will end, either in my time or yours. Wait, look, his vitals are stabilizing. Something's happening. He's, he's moving. Son? I know what we need to do. Gentlemen, how do you find it here? It will work for us. But our goal must be to scatter our operations. To live and work among the people we protect, just as Altairi Ben Lahad once counseled. Well, until that time, it's yours as you see fit. Edward, Captain Woods Rogers survived his wounds. He has since returned to England, shamed and in great debt, but no less a threat. I will finish that job when I return. You have my word. <laughs> Evening, Anne. Edward? I'll be sailing for London in the next few months. I'd be a hopeful man if you were beside me. <laughs> England's the wrong way around the globe for an Irish woman. Will you stay with the assassins? No, I haven't got that kind of conviction in my heart. You? In time, aye. When my mind is settled and my blood is cooled. Sail ho! Coming into the cove! You're a good man, Edward. And if you learn to keep settled in one place for more than a week, you'll make a fine father, too. Of all the money that ever I had, I spent it in good company. And all the harm that ever I've done, alas, it was to none. And all I've done. ago, I stood where I stand now and watched my loved ones die, betrayed by those I had called friends. Vengeance clouded my mind. It would have consumed me, were it not for the wisdom of a few strangers who taught me to look past my instincts. They never preached answers, but guided me to learn from myself. We don't need anyone to tell us what to do. Not Savonarola, not the Medici. We are free to follow our own path. There are those who will take that freedom from us. Too many of you gladly give it. But it is our ability to choose whatever you think is true that makes us human. There is no book or teacher to give you the answers. 
show you the path. Choose your own way. Do not follow me or anyone else.